Here we go. Efforts to make Hawaii more environmentally friendly have been changing the way we think about alternate sources of efficiency in our lives that do not harm the beautiful land we live on. Between organizations designed to keep our waters clean and transportation less of a hassle, Hawaii is headed in the right direction in terms of maintaining the flow of tourism for profit and keeping her residents happy. However, a concern that overpopulation, pollution, and an increase in energy problems will undoubtedly arise in the future has many Hawaii residents and state officials worried that we will become the next fallen paradise and that our beautiful home will become a burden to live in or difficult to maintain. Many of these issues have a major key player in the role of our seemingly dark future, Hawaii's energy sources. According to the Hawaii State Energy Office, 90% of the state's energy comes from burning fossil fuels and imported oil from other countries, such as the Middle East. This puts us ranking number one out of all 50 states in terms of dependency on outside sources for fuel and energy. And then I'm going to show a movie that I have on my blog. If you log into um, http um, dot dot psh, psh, um, <laughs> www dot or no, you don't even have to do www. It's supportwindenergyhawaii.blogspot.com. About 45 seconds into the clip is when uh, Governor Lingle is talking about how crappy we're doing. So what can we do? There are many steps already being taken to, to support clean energy. People are driving hybrids, carpooling, turning the lights off when they leave the house, recycling. But these are just small steps being taken. Bigger steps are necessary and need to be taken to support clean energy. This is why each of you should support the establishment and use of wind farms and wind turbines as alternate sources for energy. I understand there is a lot of skepticism associated with even the idea of supporting wind energy. I'll be addressing environmental concerns, different turbines and their costs, and then covering how supporting the investment would be well worth it as well as what it is you can do to help. I know I'm reading the whole thing right now. I'll have note cards with little bullets. I'm just trying to get used to it right now. On Hawaii's less populated islands, such as Maui and the Big Island of Hawaii, wind farms are more common. This has much to do with access to the land area needed to support them. Oahu doesn't have a lot of undeveloped places, and where there are, there tends to be a lot of opposition to new projects such as this. According to the Hawaiian Electric Company, some people are concerned about the large expanses of land needed by big wind farms. For some projects, the land around the wind turbines can be used for general grazing or growing crops. However, the land must remain open space or undeveloped in order not to interfere with the wind farm. Some people also think the wind turbines are an eyesore, noisy, a contributor to erosion, and harmful to birds which are killed flying into the spinning wind turbine blades. <laughs> I need to get a picture of that. And then I show a picture. A wind farm that would require hundreds of acres, and they usually do, may not be as appealing to such a populated area like Oahu, but would be ideal for the other islands. If Maui and Hawaii could expand on their existing wind farms, enough power could be generated to yield interest in an investment to run cables under the sea between the islands, supplying power to their neighbors. There would be less opposition from neighboring islands because they already have them there and know that they work. Possible effects of underwater cables on the environment are an issue, but the state has requested a <laughs> posted a request for proposal RFP for environmental studies to support inner island wind and inner island cable projects. This agreement addresses the problem and commits to goals such as pursuing and integrating as much as an additional 1,000 megawatts of renewable energy resources on Oahu, including approximately 400 megawatts of power from Lanai or Molokai, 60 megawatts on the Big Island, and 50 megawatts on Maui, and reaching the goal of 70% clean renewable energy for electricity and transportation by 2030, when Jessica's old. The Hawaiian Electric Company calculated that the seven acres of wind farm necessary to produce one megawatt would cost one million dollars alone. To get a better idea of what a megawatt powers, compare it to a large residential or commercial building that generally consumes several megawatts in electric power and heat. 
However, other space-saving alternatives that have not been widely addressed would be to set up small wind turbines for private, community, and business use. There are many companies selling wind turbines of all shapes and sizes. The cost of wind turbines vary. Smaller sizes range from $3,000 on up. The average home uses 10 kilowatts. A wind turbine needed to power this would cost between $35 to $50,000. Needless to say, this option would not be ideal for most of us due to income. This change would be more realistic for businesses that take in a considerable amount of profit each year. In partnership with Maui Electric Company, Miko, and Aerovironment, AV, the Maui Ocean Center has become a successful example of this small step forward. What are you doing on? I love you. Hold on, I'll give you, I'll play with you in a second. The Maui Ocean Center Wind Turbine Project promotes the beneficial uses of Hawaii's natural resources while supporting state, county, and community plans and desires to find and use renewable energy. The noise level is less than 50 decibels per bank of six turbines, whatever that is produces no effects on air or water quality, and is canopied for avian protection. Your birds won't die. The wind turbine project will effectively reduce Maui Ocean Center's electric consumption and demand on Miko while prototyping this alternative energy system for future use by other Maui businesses. My dog is begging attention right now. Oh, and then I show a picture. Whoosh. Oahu is taking its first steps towards forward with wind energy as well. Acqu according to Kai Dominique, get out of the way, cutie. According to Ka Kaheawa, I can't. I don't know why I can't say that. This whole speech is a tongue twister. According to Kaheawa.com, home website for First Wind, a wind energy company announced that on March 5th, 2010, First Wind was offered a conditional commitment from the U.S. Department of Energy for a $117 million loan guarantee to finance the construction of its proposed 30 megawatt Kahuku Wind Project. Located in Kahuku, Hawaii, the project will have the capacity to generate enough clean wind energy to power about 7,700 Oahu homes each year. First Wind plans to include innovative technology in this project, including a battery energy storage system. The Kahuku Wind Project will support the ambitious Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative. The work on the Kahuku Wind Project will create employment opportunities during design, engineering, and construction, including approximately 200 construction jobs. The projects might create a lot of jobs, but how will it benefit everyone else that already has one? Taxpayers want to make sure that the extra money they are putting into renewable energy sources is going to pay off in the long run, and that it will be an investment where the returns will definitely outweigh the cost. According to the American Wind Energy Association, over the last 20 years, the cost of electricity... Dominique! Take it easy for a second. I love you. Wind systems has dropped by more than 80%. In the early 1980s, when the first w utility scale turbines were installed, wind generated electricity cost as much as 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, state of the art wind power plants can generate electricity for less than 5 cents per kilowatt hour! G is an option that doesn't have a bad consequence, at least in regards to our future well being. Investing in this idea will, in turn, save our beautiful state billions of dollars. Great things take time and, and support. It's time we start supporting change one turbine at a time. I came up with that. <laughs> it's not funny. I urge you to write your local senators and representatives, and in even just a few words, express your desire to support wind energy. One way to do this is to log on to www.powerofwind.com and click on the option Take Action. It's easy, takes only a few minutes, and will most definitely benefit all of white. So remember that it is possible for us to live in a more beautiful tomorrow, that despite the cost of wind energy, it has much to offer us and the investments will be worth it in the years to come. Ooh, wait, 13 minutes? Ah! It can only be nine. That's okay, I speak so fast when I'm in front of people and I tend to cut information out, so maybe that'll help. <laughs> That's it, yay! And remember to visit the blog, supportwindenergyhawaii.blogspot.com. And that's just got a couple pictures and then a video. It's stupid. But, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, have a good day.